Hi everyone, my name is Debbie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. I have been a reseller for 17 years. I started on eBay back in July of 2004 and I absolutely love it. But there is an area that I have found a lot of people are very concerned about and that is eBay scams and fraud. And so I'm going to go over some things that you can do to make sure that you have eBay seller protection, put yourself in the best spot so that you can prevent scams and fraud, what to do when you do come across those instances. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples, one that happened in just the last week and how I handled it and it turned out in my favor. And so I think there are some things that you can do if you have those things happen to put yourself in the very best position. So first of all, you want to make sure that you follow all of eBay's guidelines. Number one, make sure that you never have any communication outside of eBay. Often scammers try to target brand new eBay accounts and Poshmark. If you're a Poshmark seller, when I start on Poshmark, this happened also. They will contact you and ask you to message them outside of the platform. Never ever do that because you know, they're already showing you that they are not an ethical person. They are trying to get around the rules. So why would you want to do business with someone that is already showing that they are not honest? Probably not a good idea. Second of all, you lose every bit of seller protection that you have if you go outside the platform. Say they offer you a little bit more money to sell outside of the platform. Well, if they scam you, then you have no way to get that money back. If you sell within the platform, you do have protections. So stay within the platform. But I have found those people that try to take it off of the platform, they're not trying to give you a good deal. They are often trying to get a good deal and put your account at risk. So what I do on either eBay or Poshmark when that has happened and they ask me to email them at this address and they'll often do it with spaces and stuff so that they can get the message through on the platform, then I just respond back and I say, I'm sorry, I only message through this platform or you can just not respond at all. Then I usually report that person also. You can, if you just Google a how to report fraud, you'll find a page and it will give you a little button that you can push and report that person and hopefully get them kicked off of eBay. Number two, always ship to the address that is provided by eBay. Occasionally you will have someone contact you and I think most of the time it is honest and someone is not trying to commit fraud. They'll just send a message and say, oh, I moved, that's my old address. Can you send it to this one? Or I'm sending this to my niece. Can you please mail it to her at this address? And different things like that. So usually it's people with good intentions. They just don't realize the rule. And what you can do on that is say, oh, I can only ship to the address provided. I can cancel this transaction, relist it. And then before you send the payment, just simply change the shipping address and I'll be happy to ship it to them. I can even put a little note in there to them and I'll say something like that and that's no problem. So there are times though that I have decided on my own <laughs> to go ahead and take the risk and mail it to the address. But I know if something happens, if it shows it's not delivered, if they claim that it wasn't delivered, I have no protection. I have to be willing to lose the money and the item if I do that. So if you are not willing to lose your money and your item, ship only to the address provided by eBay. Number three, be sure you ship with tracking. If you purchase your postage through eBay, it will automatically be uploaded. Sometimes I ship through Pirate Ship also. I get the tracking number there. If I ship through USPS or UPS or anywhere else, if it's not automatically uploaded, I go in and upload the tracking number. That gives you proof of shipping and if they say the item was not delivered, you have proof that it was and the eBay will side in your favor. Now, I don't ever want a person to actually not have the item, but I have found in most cases when somebody says the item shows delivered and it is not here, 
Sometimes it gets scanned incorrectly. I have had at the time when I drop off a package or my carrier picks it up, occasionally they will accidentally scan it wrong and instead of saying it was picked up, it says it was delivered. So if you see that happen the same day as you ship it, just tell them I think it was scanned incorrectly, give it a couple days and it will update and show correctly or if it's been a couple days and there's enough time for it to get there and it shows delivered, what I say is, can you please check with someone else in your household? Maybe they received it or a neighbor. And most of the time that is what happens. Even when they insist, I'm the only person that gets mail. Nobody else gets mail. I had one of these. I have it in my, one of my what sold videos. They were certain that they did not get it, that they were there to get the mail. And then she emails me like, or she messages me just about 30 minutes later and says, Oh, I thought that was my daughter's package. I got it. I loved it. So almost always that is what happens. And I think also it is important to go into things with a positive attitude and don't automatically think that people are trying to scam you because I've been doing this for a really long time and most of the time people are not actually trying to scam you. It's honest things like they did not realize <laughs> that that package was theirs or it was delivered to the neighbor or just something happens and usually everything ends up resolved. I will give an example of this. I thought this person had scammed me. I mailed this coffee, I think it was a coffee mug. It's been so long, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was for Christmas. I just got it back in the mail. I just went and checked my PO box and it was here. And I think this is what it is, it has to be. I can't imagine what else it is. But I had an issue, the person ordered it and it showed three day delivery and it had been like two weeks and they were really upset and not that nice. But I have learned always remain professional and normally if you tell the person, oh, I'm so sorry, I understand your frustration, I want to help you, I mailed it within 24 hours, I have no control over the United States postal system, usually things arrive great, but I said it was in the middle of a pandemic, they're overloaded, I'm so sorry, and I just try to let them know that I understand why they're so upset and frustrated, and usually if I do that, they come down and they end up apologizing for bad behavior if they have talked not very nice and most of the time. Sometimes not, but the majority of the time. So this person was pretty heated, but I kept telling them that I was sorry and I keep it updated. Well, a couple weeks went by and they were pretty upset. They said it was a gift for somebody and it was going to arrive after they had already gone back home. And so it was no use to them. And so I decided, well, it wasn't that much money. I think it was like $25. I said, I will go ahead and refund you. I understand it's not going to be any use to you. If you will just mark it return to sender when you get it, it won't cost you any postage. And I'm, I'm really sorry that that happened. I thought that was the best business practice to have. Well, it never came back to me and I thought, oh, that was not very nice at all. I can't believe that they kept the item when I refunded them. And then now this is July, <laughs> I get this back in the mail and I'm pretty sure it's it. So it was breakable so we can see if it arrived without breaking. <laughs> I have a video about how to package fragile items so that'd be really bad, but this has been tossed around for at least seven months. Who knows what it's been through? And I'll see if it is that item, if it is the same item that I had mailed. So it's sealed and a little rough. I blacked out the, the name to protect privacy just in case it shows on camera. So I will open it up and see. So that was one case where I thought the person in some sort of way committed fraud. You know, it could be, oh, they just never remembered to return it. They didn't get it to the post office, but I was not happy about that. And those things, oh, that one was open. So it's in one box, a little bit of padding. So they did open it. So they didn't just hit, they didn't just put return to sender because you're not actually supposed to use return to sender if you've opened it, but I guess they wouldn't know. And then it's in the packing, and then it's in bubble wrap. It's crazy, I can't even remember exactly what it was. Oh yes, now I remember this, and look, it made it. <laughs> it didn't break, so double boxing works. 
So I got the item back and initially I thought they were just not being nice and they didn't send it back and they kept it, but I was wrong. So remember, always keep an open mind and remember, people are not always out to commit fraud. Sometimes there really is an issue and there really was an issue. It did not get delivered in the time it was supposed to and it was no, of no use to them. So if I look on their side and realize what they expected and they did not get what they paid for, I understand that they should get a refund on that. Number four, an important thing to do is if you do have an issue, take immediate action. I have heard some people say, oh, I just forget it, see if it will go away, wait a while. And I think, ah, oh, that is the worst thing you can do. You want to take immediate action if someone files a claim or they send a message to you and you feel like things are not right or if things are right, it's just good to handle them right away. If you have done everything right, you communicated within eBay, you shipped to the address provided, you provided tracking, your description was right on, be sure you take pictures of everything. If you can, put a tape measure in with the pictures and show measurements if there are tags, show size, materials, every bit of the description you can on the item. So you've done everything right and then they message you or they file a claim that something is wrong. I had that happen this week and it's the first time that has ever happened through the global shipping program. Usually my international shipments are so easy, no problems at all. So this is the first time this happened and I'm almost glad that it did because I had the experience to go through that I can share with you and it turned out good. So. It uh, was a set of four plates. They were made in Italy and I actually have them on a what sold video and I was showing how I packed them. I tacked them so carefully. I put bubble wrap and craft paper and then I put a box in between each of the plates. So I had them each individually boxed and then I put padding all around. I was completely confident that they would make it just fine. And so they went through the global shipping program and so they shipped to Kentucky. Then at Ken when they arrive in Kentucky, they open them up, inspect them, repackage them, and send them on their way. So the lady gets them and she sends this message to me that is kind of not very nice sounding. And she says, this is the worst transaction I have ever had on eBay. First of all, the item is not the, uh, not the correct item. So she was saying, I sent different plates than were in the picture. And then she said, the designs are different. And she said, worst of all, one is broken and I need a set of four plates, not a set of three plates. If she had just said it was broken, I would have thought, oh my gosh, I had something break. I guess going overseas, it was not good enough. And I would have just believed her. But the fact that she said the plates were different plates, had a different design and a different background, made me realize she is not telling the truth and just how heated and attacking she was. And she even sent pictures of the plates and she had one that was broken and in pieces. And I don't know how she did it. She must have photoshopped them or something to look like different plates or she had a different set of plates and she took a picture of those and broke one so that she could have the ones that I sold. I don't know, she was doing something funny and you could just tell, it was obvious. So what I did, instead of waiting, I immediately called eBay and I always call them and it is never a long wait at all. It chose the option for them to call me back and it was like, not even a minute, they called me back and I am always very nice, I think, you can get different responses from eBay customer service reps sometimes. And so always be nice and polite. They're doing a job. They are not out to get you. I watched some videos where I think people think that the eBay rep is out to get them, but they are not. They are just doing their job. So treat them with respect and just explain the situation. So I told them I sent this plate, these plates, I told them, briefly how I packaged them very carefully. It was according to USPS guidelines for shipping. And I said, when they go global shipping, you do inspect them when they get there, right? And she said, yes. I said, 
So they wouldn't have been broken when they arrived and you would have noticed that they were the correct item. And she said, yes. I said, I think this lady is trying to commit fraud. And she sent a different picture of photos and I don't believe that they were broken. I think she broke one and took a picture. And so the lady said, okay, um, you are protected. If she files a claim against you, you, you are just fine. And so I said, okay. So I also immediately responded to the lady and told her how I packaged it. I said, will you please tell me how it was packaged to make sure it is the same box because I know 100% sure I sent the exact plates in the photos. So somehow if they were switched, I need to know how it was packaged and, and please give me some details. She never even responds back to me, but I let her know that I knew <laughs> that I sent the right plates. Then, so the next day she immediately files a claim against me, a dispute as item is not described. She just went on again about how it was a different item, different, um, different design and one was broken and that she did not want to send it back because of the cost. So I immediately get on the phone, call eBay again, explain what happens and that rep said yes you do not have to accept that as item not described. We will back you. <laughs> and um, so I, I hit do not accept the return. The return was closed, it showed closed. I asked the rep if she gives me negative feedback, am I protected? And she said, yes, absolutely you are protected. So I did not lose my money and she did not get away with fraud. So I was so happy with that. And I have found over 17 years that most of the time eBay backs me unless I am wrong. Occasionally, I have been wrong <laughs> and that does happen. So be open to that, that possibly you might think absolutely you did it right, but think, is there a chance ever that you could be wrong? Because I have before thought, oh, someone is lying. They said that that shirt is navy and it is black. I know it, I get it back and I check and I'm like, ooh, it really is black. They were right, <laughs> I owe them. And if I am wrong, I try to bend over backwards and make things right and apologize because I don't want to provide a bad experience for them. And over the years, I have noticed so many more good transactions than bad transactions. I would not continue selling if it was not beneficial. And you have to remember businesses have a certain amount of loss, returns, theft. I feel like selling online, the amount of theft or returns is very minimal and, and it is just part of the cost of doing business. And so if you look at the overall pictures, how many transactions do you have that are positive and great and you're making money and here's $5, $10, here's $20 here, $30 here, $40 here. You know, that's all day, every day that you're having those great transactions. And then once every few months you have to deal with an issue like that, that is okay. That is just part of doing business and it is a very small percentage. I when I started selling on eBay many, many years ago, it really changed my outlook on people in general. I would watch the news and see all these bad things are happening and, and I thought, oh my goodness, you know, there's so much bad stuff. And then I got on eBay and I'd get all these people that said nice, positive things. And when I would make a mistake, people would be like, oh, that's okay, mistakes happen, no problem. People were good and nice. And back then I had a lot of international sales and there was no tracking. And so I had to just trust people that they did arrive. And almost always they said that they did arrive. And occasionally they would say it didn't arrive and I would have to refund them because I had no choice. I didn't know. And so I had to refund them if they said it didn't arrive. But you wouldn't believe how many times I would refund a person and then a month later, they would contact me and say, guess what? The shirt finally arrived. What is your PayPal address? And I'm going to send payment to you when they did not ever have to do that. They just did that because they were a good, honest person. And so over the years I have learned that is most people. I would say 99.9% .9 of the people that I deal with are good, honest people. And every once in a while you have those people that aren't. And 
and, and when you do have to deal with those people, you might lose a few dollars every once in a while, but you also can call eBay. And I think getting a jump on things when you do call them, then that can change things because if I hadn't called them and talked to them, then maybe that transaction could have turned out differently. So in the end, as long as you are following all of the guidelines and doing everything that you can to be a good seller, I feel like 99.9% .9 of the time, things are going to work out well and you are not going to be scammed all the time and have a lot of fraud. At least that is my experience in the business. If you are new, it is a good idea to really work on getting your feedback up I opened a second eBay store and I did notice I was getting a lot of people contacting me trying to go off eBay, but that did not happen for long. And once I got my feedback up to like 18 or 20 or so, that didn't happen anymore. And you can build feedback from buying also. So I would try to buy anything that I could to get feedback to up my feedback for less chances of that happening. So get through that beginning part and then you won't have to deal with that so much anymore. That is everything that I have for you today. And if you're still here, thank you so much for watching. If you like this type of content and would like to join me again, I would love it if you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and join me again. And don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video or received any value from it. Thank you so much and everybody have a great day. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,